Hey everybody, Erin from The Impatient Gardener here. And today we have an exciting video because I am going to be planting my three favorite varieties of berries. And I'm just gonna guess that they're probably your favorite three too. Blueberries, strawberries, raspberries. I don't see how you can go wrong with any of those. I love them all. Um, I'm very excited to be planting blueberries because normally we can't do that here because like many of you, um, we have alkaline soil. So I am planting two small varieties appropriate for containers uh, in containers here today and I'm going to show you how we all do it and then we're going to talk about strawberries and raspberries too. So I've gotten ahead of you a little bit here because I have already prepared the soil and in fact I did this about a month ago and had I really been on my game I would have done this about six months ago but I don't have that kind of planning ability. So the one difference that I'm doing here with my blueberry soil is that uh, most blueberry container mixes start with about 50% sphagnum peat moss, which is acidic. I am trying to avoid the use of peat, so I'm going to have made a peat-free soil here. And I've started with um, a grower's mix, um, and I actually talked to the manufacturer about what their most acidic soil was, and I've gotten some of that. And I'll put links to everything uh, below for you. And to that, I have added... This is, this is actually pine bark fines, and these are from last year actually left over. And so these are almost, these have basically decomposed in my garage over the winter. And you know, blueberries like a really woodsy soil. Um, leaf mold would be great in these. If you think about where blueberries grow in the wild, uh, it is a very woodsy terrain. I remember uh, picking them as a kid in Canada, actually. There's a good amount of, of these pine bark finds in here um, because they like uh, looser soil. I've also added in a bit of compost into here for some goodness. And then I've also added in sulfur. And that's, I think I just got dirt all over my face. And I think that's, and that's where you get the acidity from. Now, sulfur, you have to be careful. You can't just go dumping it in. I found a pretty good calculator online that's more applicable to smaller areas um, that I will also put a link to in the description for you uh, so that you can calculate how much you need because you do have to do a little bit of math on this. This is what I used. Um, I have no idea what brand this is, but this is essentially an elemental sulfur, and it'll tell you on the back of the package what it is. Uh, this is the same kind of thing that you would find in a Spoma soil acidifier. There's just more of it in here, so that's why I went with this one. This will lower your pH, and the calculator that you'll see will tell you how much you have to add to lower it by a certain amount. And I need to lower this by about one point of pH. Uh, the soil that I started with is probably in the 6.3, 6.4 area. So I need to go down about a point because the ideal um, pH level for growing blueberries is basically 5.2 to 5.5. You can go a little lower than that too, but that's where they wanna be. And 5.5 is pretty much as um, pretty much the tops for them. There is another kind of sulfur called aluminum sulfate and that will change your pH very quickly but you have to be very careful with it because uh, a lot of plants are very sensitive to it and blueberries are one of them so um, if you apply too much of it or you apply it uh, repeatedly they're not going to be happy. So I have added a small amount of that here just because I didn't prepare this soil as soon as I probably should have. So all of the berries in this video have come from Jung Seed, who is also the sponsor of this video. Jung Seed, I've talked about them before. They are a family owned business that has been working in plants and agriculture for ages, well over a hundred years. They're still family owned to this day and they are a Wisconsin company, which is always nice. Um, they have garden centers around parts of Wisconsin, but they also sell online, which is how I get my things from them. And these are a couple of blueberries and I actually had them recommend these two. These are two that are two dwarf kinds of blueberries that are perfect for containers. And it's important to have two because cross-pollination will really help increase your berry yields. So I have uh, Dwarf North Sky and Dwarf Top Hat are the two that I'm using here. And this is how they came and they were bagged in uh, sphagnum peat moss, which is not surprising. And we're just going to stick this right in the middle here. Now I did get some uh, blueberry fertilizer and I will use that, but I'm not gonna use that right here at planting. Uh, you know, these are sensitive roots on smaller plants. So you really don't want to go worrying about burning roots. We'll give them a chance to get a little established in here and go from there. That's it. I've just planted this blueberry. So these are small plants and that's fine. They'll grow just fine. Um, there are a couple of things we're gonna need to do with these though. 
The first is that you can't have blueberries this year, and I'm very sorry to report that, but it is better for the health of these plants that you pick off any flowers that form. Um, I know that's hard. I don't like doing it either, but let's think about long-term on these. So we're not gonna do that for these. I think the berry we most associate with summer is strawberries. There's nothing better than a field-grown or home-grown strawberry, especially when you compare it to what you can buy in the store. The thing with strawberries is that they are short-lived perennials. They do not last forever. I think people think they do because what happens is that um, your patch ends up sort of um, uh, propagating itself via runners but you have to get the old ones out of there they're very prone to disease so it's not good to let them hang out for a while and they just sort of lose their ability to produce well after a while so there are three kinds of strawberries uh, there's june bearing which is the one you probably find if you go to strawberry picking fields they get one huge crop usually I mean, obviously it depends where you live around here it's end of june beginning of july and it's they put it all out there all at once and they're nice big berries and they're beautiful and they all come at once and that might be great for you if you want to do a lot of canning with your berries um, or freezing or something like that the next kind of berries are ever bearing berries strawberries and those have a pretty big crop kind of early in the season and then sort of intermittently produce beyond that and then the last kind is day neutral which is actually the kind that I'm going to be growing today and day neutral is kind of new there's not as many varieties out there I don't think of those at least I don't see as many varieties of those and those produce a lot of berries berries basically throughout the season like you're just going to get a nice big continuous harvest throughout the season and I think those are best for me because I don't do canning or any of that what I want to do is just have some fresh strawberries to eat kind of all the time the thing with day neutral strawberries is that uh, pretty much you treat them as annuals because they might make it a second year but really they're meant to really be grown as annuals so that's what we're growing here and that's why growing them bare root in particular makes a ton of sense so I have 50 strawberries here, if you can believe it. That's the other thing. Since these are only gonna be around for a year, I can pack these in fairly close um, and I don't need to really worry about anything else. Uh, it's, it's not like a long-term investment in time. So these beautiful bare root strawberries that I got from Jung um, came earlier this week. They've been living in my refrigerator because that's the, what the instruction said if you couldn't plant them right away. And by the way, uh, Jung sends a fabulous instruction sheet with everything they send. Really, really thorough, great information. They really have experts there uh, who write this material. This is 25 strawberries. This cost $18 for 25 strawberries. If you buy a strawberry plant at your garden center already potted up, it's probably gonna cost you about $3, maybe a little bit more. So obviously this is um, a very economical way to grow. And these are gonna grow, produce, and be done this year, all from this. This particular variety is called Seascape. Uh, it's supposed to have large, really flavorful fruits. Um, and it's resistant to a lot of the diseases that can afflict strawberries. So I don't see any negatives to that whatsoever. So this is an individual one right here. Um, let's just look at the parts of a strawberry so you know where we're planting these. So obviously you have your roots down here and you've got where, this is very easy to tell where things are. This is right here is where the start of the crown is. And that's the level that you wanna plant this at. Don't plant them too deep, or certainly don't plant them too shallow, but you wanna be right, right there so that all of the green vegetation parts are coming out of the ground. Uh, this is not hard to plant. Um, I'm probably gonna just nip these bottom roots just a touch here, and then we're gonna lay them into little trenches. But the fun thing about these berries is that we're not just gonna be planting these in the ground, we're also going to be planting them in the containers with the blueberries and some other containers, but that happens later in the year. So the nice thing about strawberries is that unlike fussy blueberries, they adapt pretty well to a lot of soils, which is why I'm going to be able to plant some of these in the containers with the blueberries, as well as in the soil along the edges of my vegetable garden here.
So just like blueberries, we do need to do some flower removal on, bear, on strawberries. And it depends a little bit on what variety you're growing. On Juneberry, you're gonna wanna take off all the flowers the first year, which is just some kind of special heartbreak. Um, but on this kind, we only need to remove the, bear, the flowers for about six to eight weeks but after I plant. So we wanna get them a nice chance to get established. And then we're gonna let them start flowering, which that'll be like early, where will that be? End of June. Be end of June. Um, we will let these start flowering uh, so that they can produce some berries because of course that's what we want them for. These are also a little bit hungrier than some other berries because they're doing so much work for us. Um, they, some strawberries, you know, need kind of two feedings a year. These are going to need almost consistent feed because they're at being asked to do a lot during their short life. As you know, strawberries love mulch, so uh, important to do that. And also it'll help retain water in this container. Make sure that those crowns are not covered. This soil is, is well amended. Um, it, it, I have put a lot of compost in it over the year. It's in pretty good shape. I am going to add though, before we start, I'm gonna add, put in a berry fertilizer and just work this in before we plant. Um, I think it'll be, I think everything else is in there. I don't think I need to be needing to add anything else at this time. Cause like I said, that ground's been amended over the years quite a bit. Other than adding in the fertilizer here, which I didn't do in those containers right away because there's just a lot going on in there right now with all those other things. So I did not add that in at this time. Remember there is compost in there. So there is some goodness in there. Um, other than that, the planting in ground is essentially exactly the same as in the container. Make a slit, spread those roots out, make sure you don't get the crown too deep, and then you're good to go. And then of course, mulch at the end. You will notice of course that I have tulips in this bed. And uh, I have to say, it's really been a tough year as far as the tulips here go. I'm just planting around them, by the way. Um, because last year I grew a great tulip display in here and I love it because it's the only place where I can plant a tulip because it's inside a fence and we have deer and of course they will eat the tulips. But unfortunately the squirrels have discovered the tulips and they have pulled up like most of the bulbs um, and destroyed them. And there are signs all over the place that they dig out a bulb and then here can see they dig out a bulb and then they just sit in the bed and they decimate it. So um, I will have to get some squirrel deterrent for future years if we're going to continue growing tulips here. But unfortunately they really put a damper on this year's display. It's the one animal that I really can't keep out with any sort of fencing situation. And water everything in. Well even though we've had a ton of rain and last night alone we got another three quarters of an inch. So the ground is very moist. So I'm gonna mulch this whole bed with that same pine bark mulch. It's actually pine bark fines, I think is what they call it. Um, that'll be really good for the raspberries and it's a much nicer look. I don't really care for straw that much and I feel like straw can create slug problems. So I'm gonna mulch with that. I think that'll be really pretty uh, in this bed. And I'm just gonna mulch essentially from blueberry pot to blueberry pot because I got some other things that are probably going in at the end soon. One thing we didn't talk about is water and um, all of these things want a good amount of water, not, you know, over watered, but a good amount, in particular the strawberries uh, would like a, like a good amount of water. So um, we do have, I do have uh, drip irrigation in this area. So I will, that should take care of most of the situation here. Um, and I will probably, probably put some drip emitters into those containers or maybe water them by hand because I'm out here all the time anyway. So that's the strawberries. I still have to plant this other side, but I want to get on to the next vegetable. I did save a handful of them that I'm going to pot up in containers because there's another spot that I want to put some uh, strawberries in a container this year. And uh, I'm not ready to plant that yet. So I'm just going to plant those up in pots for the time being and they'll be ready to go and hopefully growing well by the time I transplant them. But we need to get to my favorite berry, which is raspberries. I 
love a raspberry. It's my absolute favorite. But the problem with raspberries is uh, they're big, they're thorny, and honestly, I feel like the pruning on them is a little bit confusing no matter how many times I read it. So fortunately, there is one, or one raspberry that I know of that actually fits the bill perfectly for this situation because I don't, a raspberry is not gonna be contained in my little two foot wide bed. So I need something small. Uh, and that is raspberry shortcake, which is a bushel and berry product. This, I also ordered this from uh, Jung. They carry that one as well. It is thornless, which is my favorite part about it, but it stays very small. It's actually really meant to grow in containers, but of course you can grow them in the ground as well. So it's perfect for this situation. Um, I actually have four of them already planted in here, but I'm gonna add more because they're not producing enough raspberries for my liking. I could eat raspberries all day long. And if I had a spot where I wanted to deal with a big raspberry patch, I'd do it for sure, but I prefer to just keep everything in here. It's easier for me to manage. So that's what we're gonna be planting now. And honestly, there's nothing much to raspberry planting either. Good soil, amend it with, make sure you got some compost worked in there. Um, you just want a nice, healthy, good soil. I'm once again going to add in uh, some of the berry tone with this when I plant this. And that's about it. Uh, other than that, it's just keep an eye out. But let me show you the ones I already have. So we've had a super, super, super cold, slow spring here. So these don't look like much, but you can just see, maybe I can, maybe I can get it zoomed in enough here that you can see that they are just starting to bud out. And that's very helpful because the beauty of this particular raspberry is that the pruning on it is really pretty easy. You just see what comes up and the dead ones you cut out. And that's all you have to do for it. And that's my kind of pruning. So you don't have to worry about new canes and old canes. It's all figured out for you. So these have nice growth on them and we will keep those growing. Um, this one appears, this one down here, appears to be dead. So we'll prune that one out. And I will give these a good dose of fertilizer. And that's about all I do to these. Okay, this really couldn't be any easier, especially when we're dealing with uh, smaller plants. You're just gonna go up to the um, soil level You're just going to go up to the soil level that they are in the pot, and that's all there is. Fill in around them. I worked in a little bit of that fertilizer. And then we're just going to water them in really well. I put that probably two and a half, three feet away from the other one, which will be plenty of room for these uh, small dwarf raspberries. So I think this just goes to show that there is a berry that anybody can grow. There is the right berry for your situation. Here I've got blueberries in containers, small thornless raspberries growing in the ground, and day neutral strawberries that are gonna give me strawberries this year that I'll be able to grow in containers and start over fresh next year. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, uh, do me a favor, give it a like, that's really helpful. Big thanks to Jung Seeds for sponsoring this video. Do check them out if you're looking for some fruit to grow in your garden because they have a wide variety of fruits available and everything I've gotten from them, um, including before when I was working with them, uh, has just grown great for me. They're really experts, I think, particularly when it comes to vegetables and fruit. So with any luck, this is the first, hopefully last sort of cloudy, lousy step in having a great fruit harvest this year. I hope you'll subscribe if you haven't already so you can see what comes out of all this planting. And I hope you're having a great day in your garden. See you soon.